Stanford University. Hello, in this video for E145 Technology Entrepreneurship, I'm going to be talking about venture finance. Now, this is a topic that has a lot to cover. Entire classes are dedicated just to venture finance, raising funding for startups, and all the various options involved. Here, we're just going to be going over the very tip of the iceberg. But I still want to convey a lot of information, and so I'm going to be moving quickly through much of the material. So I hope you'll go back and rewatch the video if there are pieces I went too fast um, when we were talking about. So the three main topics that I want to talk about are what is the amount of cash that you need and what purpose is it going to be used for? This is the first question that you should think about. The second is what are the sources of capital that are appropriate for this amount of money and for this purpose? And then the third question is about what should the deal structure look like with this source of capital and this amount and need for the money? So these are the three key questions I'm going to organize the material around. So first of all, how much money is needed for this round? Venture investment tends to happen in stages. And so according to what milestone you're at, how old the company is, you'll think about a different amount of money that you might need and then raising additional money as future milestones are met. And so typically the amount of money we're talking about in the beginning at the seed stage or early stage is quite small. And as we progress to mezzanine or later stages of investment and more of the risk has been taken out, the amount of money tends to increase. So we've got our venture capital boardroom here, and um, much of what I'm going to be talking about today is venture capital, although that's certainly not the only source of money you should be thinking about. And so if we remember back to some of our models of the entrepreneurial process, one key model was that entrepreneurship and the startup process is about continually taking risk out of the venture. And so as you think about how much money you need to raise and for what purpose, you want to think about which source of white hot risk are you trying to reduce at this stage? Are you trying to reduce technology risk? Are you trying to reduce team risk and bring in a certain team member? Are you trying to reduce market risk? Um, so you need to think first of all about what you're going to use this money for and that entails which, source of risk, which sources of risk are you trying to reduce and which one is most important to focus on at this stage. Our other framework was from Kaplan and the startup race. And so you also want to think about the fact that you're continually trading off um, equity for bringing in money to reduce risk and create value. And so you want to delay this process as much as possible because the more you've reduced risk, the more that you've created value, the less equity you have to give up for your money. So I think a lot of entrepreneurs start to think about raising venture capital as this great milestone that you need to achieve that kind of proves that you're an entrepreneur. But in fact, the more that you can delay and bootstrap the venture, um, the, the more that you can um, give up less equity and less control of the company. And so there's no one right answer here. These are trade-offs that you need to think about in the process. So once you've decided what source of risk you're trying to reduce or what you're going to do with this money, then you have a better sense for how much money you need to raise and also what you're going to do with that money. You can then start to think more clearly about what sources should you go to for this capital. So there are many different sources of capital for startup firms. One source, um, if we take a look here, you've got your new business firm that you need to raise money for. Some of the initial seed funds are going to tend to come from friends and family at very early stages. They also might come from angel investors. Angel investors are essentially wealthy private individuals who are investing their own money in a new startup. So these might be doctors, lawyers, they might be former entrepreneurs. So these are high net worth individuals who have enough money to be able to invest in startup firms. So these could come at the seed or series A um, level of funding. 
uh, series A, B, or C, these are slightly later stages in funding, you might start to raise money from venture capital firms, which in turn raise their money from pension funds, private investors, and corporations. Once you get to the very latest stages, such as an initial public offering, a uh, stock market offering, then you're going to be raising money from investment banks or from private placements. So these are the main sources of capital. So these are the main sources of capital. So there are advantages and disadvantages to each of these sources. And these are changing somewhat over time. So I've plotted out here the individual angel investors, venture capital firms, and you might also think about raising money from corporations. And so typically these are going to be in um, increasing age of the firm or later stage. And so angel investors are typically going to invest smaller amounts. One million might be the cap here, although there's starting to be a class in between individual angels and venture capital firms, which is known as the super angels or the um, incubator uh, funds um, or angel groups can, can kind of come in between here. And so they can typically move fast in their decision making and uh, um, will dilute the entrepreneurs less than their equity ownership, but they also tend to have a bit uh, less funds available um, and maybe less able to provide network connections or good advice, particularly if they're physicians or lawyers as opposed to former entrepreneurs. Venture capital firms, on the other hand, can invest much more money. Um, the advantages being they possess larger sums of money, um, they can also enhance your reputation and provide some credibility. On the other hand, they're going to demand a larger share of ownership and um, they will expect to assume some control over decision making. And finally, we have corporations who are typically only going to invest much later stage and much larger amounts of money. So the advantages are they tend to offer less, less dilution and also some help in terms of distribution, um, marketing, sales, and so on. But you need to think very carefully about the downsides. The intellectual property may be at risk, and also the corporation is going to tend to constrain your future options in that if you've made a deal with one large company, then this may preclude you from making deals with some of their competitor companies. And so in one sense, you can think about various sources of capital as being on a two by two from decreasing return and decreasing risk. So at the very earliest stages where the risk is very high and the expected returns are perhaps low because these ventures are so risky, you have the three F's, friends, family, and fools, as people joke. Um, you also have the angel investors and perhaps some um, sources of government funding that can come in at the stage where you only have a business plan or you only have a prototype. You then have this large uh, swath where different venture capital funds will invest. Um, so this could be all the way from sort of business plan or prototype all the way up through having some initial sales and profitability. So venture capital funds would tend to invest. Strategic partners, so these would be large corporations, might invest at any of these stages. And then at the very latest stages where the risk is, um, has really been uh, decreased a lot, you might have banks or um, investment banks uh, putting in money at the stage of an IPO. So let's talk in a little bit more detail about venture capital and how it works. So venture capitalists essentially give money to entrepreneurs to start their businesses. They in turn get their money from what are called institutional investors. So these are university endowments or pension funds. And so in exchange for giving money to entrepreneurs, the venture capitalists are going, going to receive what's called preferred stock. And this is the equity ownership in the company. And then at some period, perhaps five to 10 years later, um, after there's been an acquisition or an initial public offering on the stock market, these venture capitalists will then return uh, more liquid uh, stock to the institutional investors. 
So finally, I want to talk a bit about the deal structure. And so since we want to go into a bit more detail here, I'm going to save this for the next video. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.